doing well. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where right now we are participating in Vlogtober. The way that this is working for me is I won't be posting every day, but I will be recording tidbits of my day throughout a week. And then every Tuesday I will post sort of a recap of that week and hopefully if I have time record a, a little intro or something like this where I can pop by and say hello. Um, my my time is limited right now so this this is what we're working with. Um, anyway, why don't we pop into what I have been working on, anything that I finished which is zero. Um, but let's talk about what I have been working on since the last time we spoke. The first thing I have is another muscle burrow. This one is for my cousin's new husband. They just got married in June. And I think what I'm going to try to do is make most of the guys in my family these muscle burrows for Christmas. Because they're so quick and they're warm and they're, they're fun. Um, the yarn I'm using is from Tristan over at Dragon Horde Yarn. This was the mystery yarn that came in her Ouija knit and sip box. She had a whole witch themed sip and knit box series for a little while. And I'm not sure if she's quite doing that one anymore, but she might have a few left over that you can go buy if you're interested. But this was the Ouija color and it is so beautiful. It's mostly a blue tonal, but every now and then there are these specks of like a red maroon sort of color. Um, I will say Scott is a little bit jealous of this hat because he said, oh, I think this hat is maybe a little too purple for me. I would prefer if it was more blue or teal or something like that. But now that he's seeing the way that it knits up, I think he might try to steal it, which I'm not going to allow to happen because I need, I need Christmas gifts done. Like we're, we're kind of close now. So I'm actually at the point where you decrease for the other end of the crown. And if you're not familiar with how muscle burrows work, you do a pinhole cast on. I do like a pinhole crochet cast on. Um, I'm actually not sure what you call it, but so I do like a crochet magic loop um, and then you knit a crown on this end until you get to the size you want for your gauge and then you knit like a whole bunch of stockinette. That's why it's mindless and that's why it's good for um, showing off a bunch of yarns that where you want to show off the yarn and you're not sure how another pattern might work up in it. And then when you get to the other end, you decrease for the other crown and then you take the bottom crown and you shove it up into the top crown and you get a doubly thick stockinette hat and it's really cool. It looks really simple. It is really simple to knit but there's enough in there to keep your interest and if you're like me who's just wanted to tune out the past year after a few really rough years then a muscle burrow is for you. And then my stitch marker for this bad boy is this little ghosty that came in my Three by the Sea Designs Mystery Grim Grinning Ghost Sock Set, which is really, really cute. Um, I can show that to you in a minute, but look how adorable he is. As soon as I opened him up, I was like, he's going on my latest project because, I mean, come on. Then the other project that I have been actively working on in the mornings before work are my Sockoween socks. So if you aren't aware of what Sockoween is, it is a Patreon only knit along that the Bakery Bears are doing throughout the month of October. And the goal is to pick your spooky themed yarns and knit as many socks as you want and or can with them. So that's what I'm doing. And this is my first finished one. The yarn is a Homespun House's um, August patron colorway slash sock set called Witchy, and I can't get enough of it. As soon as I opened it, I had I had other yarns lined up for this Sockoween situation, but then I got this, and I was like, nope, we're we're doing this thing. Um, so the colors are absolutely beautiful. It's mostly pink, so obviously screamed my name. And then you have, you know, purples and oranges um, that make it a little bit more autumn than just like, hey, we're pink. It has Stellina in it, so it's gorgeous. Silver Stellina, obviously. So I finished the first sock of that using the Wizardry sock pattern 
from Kay Jones of Bakery Bears fame, because obviously this is a Bakery Bears knit along, I wanted to use a Bakery Bears pattern. And I really like it. It's so squishy and soft and just, it really does something with the yarn. So you can see like what it looks like in stockinette versus with this subtle um, patterning using various knits and pearls. So loving that. And this is as far as I've gotten with the second sock. We are actually on our way to a witchy craft show at a local distillery. So really excited about that. We're going to go. We're going to get some yummy drinks and we're probably going to buy a lot of spooky stuff. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. And these are going to come along with me while we are enjoying ourselves. Um, and I'm hoping I can get to the heel. Um, as I mentioned in my last of October episode, you don't get a ton of yarn in these Patreon, Patreon sock sets from Homespun House, but it's been working out for me. I figured out exactly how long the leg needs to be so I get the most out of the yarn. So there really hasn't been a lot of knitting on the leg before I have to do the heel. So with any luck, I can get to the heel today and just be done with it. This is a little progress keeper that I got from Charmed and Dangerous. As soon as I saw it, I knew it had to be mine, a little ghost zombie. So perfect for the season. And yeah, so these are what I knit on every day before work for at least like 30 minutes or so. And that's just, that's why they're not done yet because I knit on these in the morning and then I knit on my muscle burrow at night. And that way I kind of have two projects going at once and ensure that I'm getting everything done that I need to get done for reasons. Then I mentioned the Grim Grinning Ghost Mystery Sock Set from 3 by the Sea Designs. So I wanted to show this to you because I think it might be the next sock set that I cast on for Sockoween when these other ones are done. And I might make these a Christmas gift as well. Um, I have decided to knit Scott's mom a pair of socks because I've done it before and she's really enjoyed it and Scott thinks she would like it. And I think these are mostly in her palette. She does like some fuchsias and things as well, but she, based on all of her decorations and everything I've made for her in the past, she strikes me as more of like a purpley teal type person. Yeah, this is Grim Grinning Ghosts. And again, it's from 3 by Disney Designs. It's on her Sanibel base fingering, which is 75% um, superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, should be easily able to get a pair of socks out of these and kill two birds with one stone. One for Sackoween, one for a Christmas gift. So I'm really excited about this set. Then in other acquisitions, I got the Ruby and Roses Love in Stitches exclusive colorway called Love and Roses. It is also a sock set, if I didn't mention that already. So if you're not aware, Natalie over at Knitty Natty runs a community called Love and Stitches, and every now and then she does these events where um, a dyer will come and exclusively dye a colorway for her members. This was one of them. So back in August, she actually went to um, Addie from Ruby and Roses Studio, and they dyed up this colorway together, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I am a big fan of Addie's. Um, I actually interviewed her for Knitability. I think it was earlier this year. I want to say it was in the February issue and she is a joy to work with. She's really young, which is kind of shocking <laughs> when you realize that like, oh, you have your stuff sorted out when you're 19 years old. What's that like? Because I'm 40 and I don't know what I want to do when I grow up, but this is what it looks like, and I really love this. Can't wait to knit it up. Um, I'm probably going to wait until after the holiday. It smells good. Be right back, huffing my yarn. I'm probably going to wait until after the holiday season to work on this because it's going to be just for me. Although I have been debating making it another muscle burrow to show off the yarn and then making this contrasting color uh, a brim, like making it longer and then having a fold up brim that's in this color. So we'll see what happens with that, but 
it will be mine. So now let's segue into my vlogs for during the week, which I'm really excited about, namely because I have a couple Halloween advent calendars going right now. One is a sticker one, which you'll see. Um, I didn't get it until a couple days into October, so you won't see it um, the entire time, but you'll see it from here on out, and it's really cool. I love it. And then the other is the Fangirl Fibers Haunted Disney's Haunted Mansion Advent advent, which has been a treat to open every day. So make sure to stay tuned for the vlog and then we'll come back and talk about some random stuff. Really, truly, there is no better way to kick off a morning than with a strong cup of coffee. And Lord knows that with the way work has been going lately, I have really needed it. But luckily, to pick up my spirits, I have been able to open the, this Fangirl Fibers quote-unquote advent every day, and I have really been enjoying it. I'm not sure if we are going for a fade, and you'll see why as this vlog continues, but I have really been enjoying enjoying the colors and the characters they are themed after. Um, as already mentioned, I have kicked off every morning by knitting on my wizardry socks, so here is a quick peek at the progress on those. Let's take a minute to admire this gorgeous colorway slash sock set from Leading Men Fiber Arts. This is a Nitty Natty, another Nitty Natty inspired colorway that I absolutely had to pick up for obvious reasons. But as I have mentioned before, she, her husband, and their little dog Toaster are doing van life right now, and they are meeting up with various dyers and some of them are making exclusive yarn. The sock set here um, also includes two minis. This one is called Kent Urgy, which I love the name of it and the color actually. Scott really likes it too, but it's mine. He can't have it. And then here we have another toaster mini, which actually looks really pretty with the pink. You know, I, I have my doubts with browns, but I think it's really nice. Um, so yeah, really enjoy this. I think maybe um, for bakery bears at some point, this will be a yarn that I review and we'll see what happens there. But yeah, definitely go check, him, check it out. A couple weeks back, I pulled the trigger on joining the Crazy Sock Ladies members only area, mostly so I could join the Facebook group as well and interact with a whole bunch of other people who are fans um, and knit a lot, essentially. And so far, no regrets. I can't remember if what I was watching here was one of the members only videos or not, but figured I'd pop in and just say, hey, this has been a great feature. Mowgli also has a new friend. This is Baphomet, a stuffy that uh, I think it's Gimme Swag did with Emma Thorne, who is another channel that I watch. And it's just really cute, not unlike Mowgli. Another day, another strong cup of coffee. Honestly, if I didn't label these videos, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart, probably. You know, I, I am a hiring manager at work right now, and if you haven't gone through that, it is, it is next level. I'm, I, I need a moment. Here is our first glimpse, I think, of the Halloween sticker calendar that I was talking about, where basically every day during the month of October, you get to decorate something fun on your haunted house, and it's truly making my life right now. Not so unlike Trixie, who is trying to make it into every video where I open yarn, I think. Um, very much like Vlogmas, if you can remember that. But I somehow was able to manage to get her out of the way so we could actually take a look at the yarn today, which was Medusa. I think Scott actually feels bad for how stressed out I am at work between uh, hiring and starting a new job really in just July and basically working 12 hour days every day. So he surprised me with 
this, I'm not sure if it was mystery jewelry or if he, I think he said he bought it on purpose, but it came in a pumpkin essentially. So I got to enjoy this necklace for Halloween and I love Barbara jewelry so much and I'm excited to wear it. Ooh, it's like a dance party on my chest. <laughs> Then what with opening Haunted Mansion themed yarns every day and for being as obsessed with the Haunted Mansion ride in Disney World as much as I am, it only seemed appropriate that we actually watch the Haunted Mansion movie, which we hadn't yet. So we sat down that night and I worked on my latest muscle burrow and enjoyed the movie. It was really cute. I recommend it. It goes without saying that now that it's officially fall, even though it's like 80 degrees outside every day, I am back in a tea mood. So I got this Halloween autumnal tea option set from David's Tea as I'm wont to do around the holidays and have been enjoying a cup of one of those flavors every night. There's quite an assortment in there um, with a bunch of fall sort of flavors. I will say that my favorite flavor is a pumpkin spice that they have that didn't come in this, but you should go look for it. At this point, I'm noticing a pattern in the Haunted Mansion advent where there is a lot of blue, so I'm growing concerned that Scott is going to steal this from me. I also thought it was worth mentioning that Splendid Spoon came out with a pumpkin spice shake. It's not bad. Um, on the days that Scott works, I drink those smoothies for breakfast, and I generally like them. The pumpkin spice, I feel like I was expecting more um, but it's not, it's not terrible, but to make myself a little happier with how not exciting <laughs> it, it turned out to be, I drank my coffee this day out of the head of my Frankenstein tiered mugs from Temptations and it was as delicious as ever. Another day, another beautiful yarn from the Fangirl Fibers Haunted Mansion Advent. And again, I'm questioning if this advent was made specifically for Scott with all of these blues. Because I couldn't resist, I ended up getting Mowgli, this other furry spider friend who actually kind of looks like him. So they're besties. If you've been following my channel for a while, then you already know that I am a big fan of the Grim Life Collective. They do a bunch of spooky things, but they recently went to Highgate Cemetery and I couldn't resist watching. Of course, no late week YouTube viewing is complete without some type of cocktail. And I forget what this was. I want to say it was a Negroni, but I was able to enjoy it out of my mid-century mod back glass while I watched Alt Knots talk about her 13 days of Poe unboxing, which even though I'm not participating in it, I have really been enjoying watching. Finally, the weekend arrived at long last, which meant it was time to do some chores and relax with the dogs. Poor Fritzy is old and has a series of maladies befalling him at this point, one of which is a heart issue that requires taking medication every day. So he's not usually one of the worst dogs with taking pills, but he still does love a good pill pocket. So every morning I shove his little pill in this guy and then he chomps it down.
integral fibers haunted mansion mini is this gorgeous saturated blue and again pretty sure that's gonna get stolen from me if i don't keep a firm grip on it but it is so pretty and i love the hitchhiking ghosts period even though I had a lot of chores to do this weekend, I did manage to slip in some knitting time where I worked almost exclusively on my Sockoween socks. I had really been looking forward to that because I love working on them, but I'm limited to only like 30 to 60 minutes in the morning. So I sat down and enjoyed the latest episode of Bakery Bears while I knit on them while watching Kay give us the next steps in making my favorite blanket. know what's going on between Ziggy and me lately but we're having a little bit of a love affair I uh, he is mostly really up Scott's butt so I don't know what happened to him but suddenly we're besties he has been following me around a lot more he's been laying on top of me he does what we call a pillow puppy where he sleeps on my head at night and yeah he's just the best because, as you know, I haven't overextended myself enough, I am also a longtime member of Feminist Book Club, which is an entirely virtual national, I think just national book club that focuses on books of the feminist variety. And when I saw this bag was going to be part of their fall themed box, I knew I had to get it. For, I mean, you read it. So here are the titles that we got. I won't go into any specific details about them unless and until I read them or you tell me that you're interested in hearing more about the books or the book club itself. But essentially, the box was all women uh, thriller writers and I was really interested to dive in. <music> Sunday, which is when my Sunday scaries slash anxiety for the work week really starts to kick in. At least, you know, it was very similar during Vlogmas when I would get stressed out. I would have something to look forward to, like the Haunted Mansion minis. Um, I justify these purchases by saying, you know what, I do get very stressed out and if I don't have something to look forward to during the day, I might actually scream. So this was a nice little surprise. I love the blue and the yellow. Sunday, we kind of had an impromptu day out with each other. Scott was going to a uh, beer membership event later in the afternoon, and I had found this, I don't want to call it a craft show, but some type of vendor event called Festival of the Witch, which is right up my alley. So a bunch of weird fun crystal tarot witchy goodness um, basically everything you can imagine they had here we had a really good time walking around looking at all the really cool stuff that they had to offer there were so many candles and they were all just really cool um, not to mention little treats that we ended up buying a bunch of if I'm honest um, by the time we got there we were already a little bit hungry and then we found this stand that had chocolate covered Oreos and a pumpkin pie type things so yeah it was so good um, we actually ran into a couple people while we were there which was kind of nice but otherwise we just enjoyed being outside and buying pretty much everything that we set our eyes on which is fine with me honestly because there was just some really 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 cool stuff 10 out of 10 would go back again 
This booth in particular was really cool because she did resin glow in the dark artwork. And so first we picked up the Beetlejuice ghost, but then I saw this one in the middle and I was like, wait, is that Death Becomes Her? Um, so yeah, we own that now because obviously. Here is everything that we came home with, starting with Hester the Butterfly Skelly. Yes, I was told she needed to be named, so that's what I did. I also got this witch lamp lantern situation. I had wanted one like this that just came out this year. There is a similar ghost one, and I saw this witch and knew it had to be mine. Um, of course, we have these the glow-in-the-dark artwork, and then literally all of the candles that we needed but I didn't actually need, but now they're ours. I'm not sure if I ever shared with anyone yet what I am doing with all of my Homespun House Patreon minis. I got my first set of three in January and have been getting them ever since. And I really like them, but had no idea what to do with them. So I finally caved and started crocheting this granny stripe blanket. And it is so fun, so squishy, really loving it. As always, good things like the weekend come to an end and we are here on Monday. So there has been lots of coffee, there has been ibuprofen, and we are just diving into it. But first, my favorite part of the day, opening my Haunted Mansion minis from Fangirl Fibers, of course. We are now fully into a delightful green. This is one of the green colors that I actually really like in yarn. Green's not always one of my top favorites, but this one's really pretty. So it does seem like we're getting kind of like a rainbow or a fade at this point you know we started with the creams and we went into some yellows and blues and now we are straight into green so we'll see luckily despite the fact i woke up to uh, pretty much everything in my life being on fire i was still able to get in at least 30 minutes of knitting on my sakoween socks um, i haven't decided if i'm going to continue this later in the evening so i guess we'll find out but now that i don't have a muscle burrow to knit and i'm taking a brief break from that it's either this or my granny stripes blanket or alternative I could start the Christmas socks for my mother-in-law. So I don't know. Let's see what the day brings us. And how are we ending week two of Vlogtober, you might be asking? Well, I got done with a bunch of my meetings, headed downstairs and had dinner with Scott and we watched Get Out while I worked on my granny stripe blanket. And as we speak, I am about to log into another meeting. It is it's quarter after seven. I'm going to finish editing this and let everything process while I hop on to this other call at eight o'clock. Um, because we are a global company, I sometimes have to hop on to these late meetings to talk to our stakeholders in um, APJC slash, in this case, Singapore. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a late night call and then I'm probably just going to shower and go to bed and get right back to it tomorrow. So I suppose I will see you next week with more coffee, more Motrin, and more whining I guess but I don't know um, I I'm tired <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed my week of vlogs. As you can tell, once again, there is a reason that I'm doing this weekly. I don't get to film a lot during my day, but I am really happy about the stuff that I am able to film. So, um, 
yeah, happy to share all of that with you. Uh, but before we go today, I wanted to quickly catch up about the uh, spooky season books that I'm reading that have really gotten me into the spirit of Halloween and the spirit of autumn and all of that. So the first book slash series that I want to talk about is The Vampire Knitting Club. It's a series by Nancy Warren and originally I heard about it through the Love and Stitches group because it's the October book of the month for their book club. But my knitting group that I co-manage, The Worsted Witches, we are also doing a read and craft along from September to November. And this is the book that we are reading while we craft all of our autumn things, whether that's, you know, Christmas gifts, colorways, whatever we want to knit for the season. This is what we're reading while we do that. I actually went ahead and bought the audiobook because I have so many audible credits and I don't typically listen to audiobooks because I just tune out a lot and then I miss half the stuff that's happening. For whatever reason, I have been able to pay attention to this one really well. So well that I am now on book four. <laughs> um, I actually started book four this morning, so I am blowing through them. And I'm not sure if it's because they are meant to be cozy mysteries or if it's just I'm really interested in the fact that there are vampires and witches and, you know, tis the season. Maybe that's why. But um, 10 out of 10 would recommend um, our... Our main character, Lucy, I keep saying is no Jessica Fletcher. She's not very bright. <laughs> she has a tough time solving literally anything. And she also can't knit, but she owns a knitting store called Cardinal Woolsey's. And she has a little black familiar named Nyx, which excites me to no end because I have a little black familiar named Mowgli. At least that's how I refer to him. And she, her shop hosts a bunch of vampires every other week for a knitting club. And I think that's all you need to know to get started. It's interesting. I'm loving it, blowing through it. And I can't wait to see how many of these books I actually finish by Halloween because I think there are, at least on Audible, I think there are 11 to 14 or something like that in the main series. And then there are spinoffs where it's a vampire knitting club Cornwall. And then she started writing prequels for it. So I, I'm going to be busy for a while and I'm so excited. The other book that I'm reading right now is called The Last One Left by Riley Sager. It is the bonus book for another book club I'm in called Books, Booze, and Brunch, where you meet up with all of the other members and talk about whatever the national selection is. So people will spin up the group in multiple cities, membership is $6, and then twice a month they meet up to socialize. I started that a couple nights ago. Really like it. I have always liked R Riley Sager's books for the most part. There are some that have been a little bit lackluster, but I still enjoyed reading them. They are thrillers. This one is, of course, a thriller with a hint of spooky, so it's exactly what I wanted, and I'm really enjoying it. It's about a woman who becomes a caretaker for an el another elderly woman who lives in a mansion and was accused of murder as a teenager, and not only just murder, but murdering her entire family, so um, it's, it's creepy. We'll put it that way. I am not sure there is another book, I forget what it's called, but when I figure it out, I'll put it here. That is the main book read for this book club, um, but I had to order it. So while waiting for that to come in, I started this Riley Sager book because I knew I could finish it really quick. And that one sounds interesting too, but maybe a little bit more on the cozy side, which I are, am already getting with Vampire Knitting Club, so I'm not as excited for that. But we'll see what happens. With that, I will leave you for another episode of Vlogtober. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment down below about, you know, anything really. Um, I've been enjoying watching other people's Vlogtobers too and commenting on things like that. Like Vanessa Nitty Witch, she was talking about how she just got permanent jewelry this week and I just got permanent jewelry um last weekend when we were in Philly so it was it's been fun to like watch that and be like oh what a quinky dink like I also um I also got zapped <laughs> um so yeah it's been it's been fun and I hope that you're enjoying it too and that you're enjoying the first week of 
Halloween, truly, and that you're getting in all of the movies that you want to watch. And with that, I will see you next week. Bye.